JK appears to be trying to calm himself. He didn't expect Yin, who usually appears polite, to turn into a lion when she's jealous. Alright, before the situation gets worse, maybe I should just fire that woman. Tomorrow, I'll ask her to resign from this company. The next morning. Today, Yin arrived earlier than usual. In the early morning, she was already at JK's office building. She entered the building, but this time, her destination wasn't JK's room. Yin approached one of the receptionists, smiling warmly. Good morning, Miss Yin. How may I assist you? Please call the female employee named Park Jenny. I'd like to meet her, but don't say it's me. Just tell her that someone is looking for her. All right, I'll call her here. While Yin stood near the entrance, facing outward, waiting for Jenny to arrive, it didn't take long. Excuse me, did you want to see me? Yin immediately turned around. Initially, she smiled politely. But a few seconds later, her smile disappeared, and her eyes glared at Jenny. Yes, Park Jenny, I'm the one who wants to meet you, and it seems there's something important we need to discuss. Let's get straight to the point. I don't want to beat around the bush. Please resign from this company today. What if I refuse? Are you feeling threatened now? I hope you understand your situation, Jenny. Be a good child, or your father's career as a doctor will be at risk. Ha, huh. so you can only threaten me? Threaten? I'm not threatening you. I'm just advising you to be a good child and not to burden your family. Sometimes one must give up on their love. Forget your feelings for JK. He doesn't even remember you. Ha, huh. do you think you've won just because you're engaged? What about his feelings for you? You had to fight hard to get his attention too. I know JK also rejected you in the past, right? You and I are no different. Jenny, hello, sorry, but why do you seem to lack the ability to think rationally? Or maybe you're just too foolish to think. Clearly, our positions are vastly different. You're just an employee. Oh, sorry, a former employee. Meanwhile, I am now his fiancée, soon to be his wife. Do you know what that means? I have the full support of both of JK's parents. He even prioritizes our relationship over his own feelings. Do you know what that means? It means that JK is someone who doesn't care about emotions. For him, rules and principles are everything. Do you think you can melt the heart of someone like that? He has already decided to accept me as his wife through this arranged marriage. You know what that means? It means his life principles can't be changed. So, Jenny, just give up. You don't fit into his life principles. Besides, when I asked him, JK didn't remember you at all, Jenny. Just be a good child, for the sake of your parents. I don't want to ruin your parents' careers, but if you force me, well, I'll gladly do it. I don't have much time to talk with you. In half an hour, your resignation letter should be in JK's hands, and I prefer. You don't deliver it directly to him. Just leave it with another employee, because I don't want to see your face in front of him. With that, Yin walked away, leaving Jenny alone. Jenny took a deep breath, clenching her fists. You're crazy, Yin. Yin returned to the receptionist's desk. Can I assist you with something else, Miss Yin? I forgot to leave this with you earlier. It's some food, please make sure it gets to JK's room. But Miss, Mr. Jian is currently in his office. Are you sure you don't want to? No, I have other matters to attend to. If he asks about me, just tell him I'm in a hurry. All right, I'll convey the message, miss. With that, Yin left the office building. Meanwhile, in JK's office, he appeared to be busy with his work. Then, he remembered something. All right, I think I can call Jenny now. The reason for calling her was to fire her. He picked up the telephone receiver, ready to press the button. But suddenly, there was a knock on his door. Come in. JK, Miss Jenny left this with me earlier. She asked me to give it to you. Jamin sat down in front of JK's desk casually. Jamin was JK's close friend and held an important position in his company. He was also someone trusted by JK's father. What is this? JK opened it, revealing the words resignation letter. JK wasn't surprised because his initial intention in calling Jenny was to fire her. However, JK was still curious about whether Yin played a role in this. What had Yin done? Shortly after, there was another knock on JK's office door. Come in. Mr. Jian, this is a delivery from Miss Yin. A delivery? What is it? She said it's food for you, sir. Why did she leave it with you? Why didn't she come here herself? I don't know, sir. Miss Yin said she was in a hurry. Finally, the receptionist bowed and asked permission to leave the room. Meanwhile, Jamin was sitting there, trying to hold back his laughter. As soon as the receptionist left, 
Jamin burst into laughter and asked. Oh, so, you two are still fighting? Haven't made up yet? Shut up. That night, in JK's living room, I heard you and Yin got into a fight, JK. What's up, JK? Why was she so enraged that she slammed a door? Father, how did you know? Even though I rarely go to the office nowadays, don't think I'm unaware of the situation there, my son. I have many trusted people there. A female employee trying to get close to me, so Yin got angry. She wants me to fire her. Well, just fire her. Have you already done it? JK remained silent, not answering his mother's question. Oh, I see. You don't want to fire her because that's why Yin got mad, right? My goodness, JK. No wonder Yin is upset with you. Mom, actually, I had planned to fire her on the next day after that day. But it turns out that Yin took care of it first. Yin did what? She threatened the woman, and in the end, the woman submitted her resignation letter herself. Hearing JK's explanation, they all fell silent. Then suddenly, JK's father burst into laughter. Yin did that? Something like this gives me a sense of nostalgia. JK's father glanced at JK's mother while continuing to laugh while JK's mother just rolled her eyes. JK, it looks like from now on, if you're going to hire new employees, prioritize hiring men, not women. He continued, while still laughing and glancing at his wife again. In JK's room, he appeared frustrated, thinking about Yin. He was puzzled about what he should do to persuade Yin not to be angry anymore. Finally, he picked up his phone and started typing. Hi, Yin, what are you doing right now? Are you still mad at me? Shortly after, there was a response from Yin. Yes, I'm still angry. I don't feel like replying to your messages. JK spontaneously smiled widely as he read it, mumbling to himself. She's really cute. She says she doesn't want to reply to my messages, but she replies anyway. JK typed again. I'm sorry for what happened the other day. Are you busy now? Can I call you? Yin's response. JK, I'm still angry. I don't want you to bother me. JK sighed deeply. He was getting more confused about what he should do to appease Yin. After checking some documents, JK looked at the clock. It was almost lunchtime. He picked up his phone and typed a message. Are you coming to my office today? I'm waiting for you. Shortly after, a message came in, a response from Yin. No, I don't want to meet you. JK sighed deeply. He immediately stood up and left his office. This can't go on like this. JK finally arrived at Yin's house, where a servant greeted him. I'm Jian JK, and I'd like to meet Yin. Hearing JK's name, the servant recognized him and politely invited him inside, where he waited in the living room. Meanwhile, the servant went to call Yin in her room. At the moment, the house was quiet, with Yin and a few servants being the only ones present, as her parents were at the office. Soon, Yin came downstairs with a cold expression, approaching JK and sitting next to him. Why did you come here? I already said I don't want to meet you. But I can't let our relationship stay like this. Yin, actually, I had planned to fire that woman yesterday. I was about to call her, but it turns out that her resignation letter was delivered to my office by someone else. So, Yin, there's no point in us fighting over her. In truth, Yin was secretly delighted to see that JK had come to visit her at home. However, she didn't want to show it. Fine. I forgive you, but it doesn't mean my heart has healed already. Hey, I haven't had lunch yet, and I bet you haven't either. How about we go out to eat? Inside, Yin was very happy, but she tried to stay calm. All right, but I need to get ready first. JK nodded, smiling, and waited for Yin to prepare. A short while later, Yin came back downstairs, and they headed to JK's car before going out to find a restaurant. So, where would you like to eat? It's up to you. From Yin's cold tone, JK could tell that she still hadn't fully forgiven him. While focusing on driving, JK suddenly, and gently, reached out and held Yin's hand. Yin was truly surprised by JK's gesture, and her heart started beating rapidly, although she tried not to show it. Yin attempted to pull her hand away, but JK's grip only tightened. Don't let go. Let's keep it like this. Finally, Yin gave in, letting JK continue holding her hand gently. For her, it was too sudden, and her heart was racing. She felt butterflies fluttering in her stomach. On one hand, she was happy about JK's change, but on the other, she grumbled inwardly. Why is he being so sweet now when I wanted to be angry? Oh God, give me strength. It's rare for you to behave like this. Usually, you're the one who dislikes such things. 
JK's voice, unlike his cold office tone, was now very soft. He was treating Yin warmly. While still looking ahead and focused on driving, he said, This isn't the office. No one will see us. There was no more coldness in JK's tone. This time, his voice was very gentle, and he was genuinely affectionate toward Yin. As for Yin, sitting beside him, she blushed and tried to control her racing heart. Before they knew it, they had arrived at a fancy restaurant. They got out of the car and went inside. During the meal, Yin didn't say much, and JK could tell she was still a bit upset with him. Hey, Yin, please stop being angry. I'm not used to your cold behavior like this. I'm sorry for everything I've done. Yin began to smile and nodded. However, she still wanted to maintain some distance between her and JK. She wanted to protect her heart from being hurt again, as it had been during their recent interactions. Days passed, but the relationship between JK and Yin didn't change much. Yin had forgiven JK, but she still kept her distance and only spoke when necessary. She no longer brought food to JK's office, and she no longer initiated messages. If they did communicate, it was usually initiated by JK. On the other hand, JK seemed to be feeling the pressure of this situation. Normally, he could handle all his office affairs well, but lately, he seemed distracted and unfocused. His work started to become disorganized. Eventually, JK's immune system weakened significantly, possibly due to stress or excessive fatigue from work. He developed a fever, felt heavy-headed, and had a high body temperature. One morning, JK's parents appeared worried and called a doctor to their home to examine JK. He's just exhausted and needs rest. Let him rest for a few days. And please try to avoid stressing him out. I've prepared medication and vitamins for him. His fever should go down soon, but don't let him get too tired. JK's parents thanked the doctor for coming. Mom, Dad, I'm sorry for causing you trouble. What about the office? Don't worry about the office right now, JK. We'll handle things there. You just rest at home. Sorry, but we have to leave you for a bit. I'll call Yin shortly so she can take care of you here. JK's heart raced upon hearing this. He couldn't wait to see Yin. At this moment, he missed her so much and couldn't wait for her to come. She was his fianchi after all. What? He's sick? Mom, are you serious? Yin looked surprised and genuinely concerned at the moment. Her mother nodded. Yes earlier, Mrs. Jian called me. They had to leave JK because there was no one to take care of his office. So for the time being, Mr. and Mrs. Jian would handle it. All right, I'll go to their house. Yin immediately got ready. Her heart was racing, and she felt a sense of guilt. Why did JK get so sick? Doesn't he eat properly? That can't be. His parents must take great care of him. Why is he sick? Is it due to exhaustion? Is he stressed? Whatever it was, Yin was in a hurry. She wanted to see JK as soon as possible. It didn't take long for Yin to arrive. JK's parents had already left for their offices. Yin saw JK lying weakly in bed, his face a little flushed due to his high body temperature. She sat down next to him and continued to watch his face. Yin's heart ached as she looked at JK, who was so weak. Slowly, her fingers touched JK's forehead, then moved down to his neck. She furrowed her brow when she felt how hot he was. Why is your body so hot? Has the doctor given you medicine? Why hasn't the fever gone down yet? She asked one of the servants to prepare a small towel and a basin of water. Then, Yin began to gently sponge JK's forehead. JK noticed something wet on his head. JK woke up slowly. He smiled as soon as he saw Yin sitting by his bedside. He spoke, but his voice was very weak. Yin, you're finally here. I missed you so much. Yin smiled, but deep inside, she wanted to cry, hearing JK's weak voice. She missed him immensely too. Yin smiled at JK but her eyes welled up with tears. Rest okay? Why is your body still so hot? Did you take your medicine earlier? I took it this morning. The next dose is scheduled for noon. All right then, you need to rest. JK shook his head and reached for Yin's hand. I don't want to sleep, because when I wake up, you might have gone back home. Hearing JK say that, Yin couldn't help but laugh softly. JK's hand felt hot in hers. You should sleep. If you don't rest, your body won't recover. Yin, forgive me. I can't take it if you keep treating me this way. You're really torturing me by being so cold. JK spoke very weakly, still holding Yin's hand, unable to hide his longing for her. Yin couldn't hold back her tears anymore. She cried softly in front of JK. Forgive me. I didn't know you were feeling so stressed like this. Seeing Yin cry, 
JK panicked and quickly positioned himself to sit up, pulling Yin into a warm embrace. He tried to comfort Yin with his embrace, but the more he tried to calm her down, the more Yin's tears flowed. Now Yin felt like the bad person. Yes, JK had treated her coldly before, but he hadn't made her so stressed that she became sick. She cried in JK's embrace. It's okay, Yin. Now that we're together, I'll definitely get better. Yin couldn't find any words to say in JK's embrace. She simply tried to hold back her tears, burying her face in JK's chest. Eventually, Yin's tears began to subside. She slowly lifted her head to look into JK's eyes. JK smiled gently at her. Are you feeling calmer now? Yin simply nodded softly. In front of JK, Yin appeared, disheveled, with puffy eyes, a red nose, and tangled hair. JK smiled, looking at her. While he tittied up Yin's hair, he gently wiped away the remaining tears on her cheeks, then his fingers brushed her lips. JK couldn't hold back his longing any longer. He leaned in and kissed the lips of his future wife. This time, it was Yin who was surprised by JK's actions. She wanted to pull back, but JK held her neck firmly. He held her even tighter, not allowing Yin to move away. Yin didn't respond at first. It was so sudden that she was shocked that JK was kissing her. Meanwhile, JK didn't care anymore, even though he knew Yin wasn't responding. He continued his activities with his fiancée. The pent-up feelings he had held back for so long were now pouring out. After a while, Yin began to respond to everything JK was doing to her. They continued to enjoy that beautiful moment. It was as if the world belonged to just the two of them. JK was no longer holding back, no longer repressing his feelings. There was no embarrassment or shame anymore. He was carried away by the moment. In JK's mind, they were alone, in his bedroom, not in the office, and there was no one to interrupt them at this moment. And yes, the woman with him now was the one he longed for, the one who would become his wife. His bedroom, which was usually cool, now felt warm due to their love activities. Later that evening, JK was sitting leisurely, watching TV with Yin in the family room. Shortly after, JK's parents entered the house, returning from work. They looked very pleased to see JK seemingly recovered. Wow, you're better JK? Thank goodness. You look so refreshed. You've just taken a shower. Thankfully the medicine and vitamins from Dr. John seem to suit you. No mom, I didn't take any medicine from Dr. John. It tastes bitter, and I don't like it. Yin brought me a different medicine. It tastes sweet, right, Yin? While Yin looked surprised and confused by JK's words. Huh? Sweet medicine? Isn't sweet medicine usually for children? Is there sweet medicine for adults? What's the name of the medicine, JK? I forgot, Dad, but it's definitely medicine for adults. Well, whatever it is, as long as you're healthy now. Thank you, Yin, for taking care of JK. Yin looked awkward and just smiled. JK's parents left the two of them and went to their room to change clothes. That naughty kid. Does he want to prank us? Does he think we don't know what he means? Sweet medicine from Yin? Huh. What sweet medicine? Meanwhile, JK's father laughed upon hearing his wife's rant. The most important thing is that he's healthy. And thankfully they've made up. If not, I'd have been troubled listening to you complain almost every night about their relationship not getting warmer and improving. Meanwhile. Ouch. That hurts, Yin. Don't pinch me. Why are you talking like that, JK? What if they get suspicious? Relax. I guarantee they won't suspect a thing. JK. What if I get pregnant? If you get pregnant, well, then we'll just get married. So, if I don't get pregnant, we won't get married? Is that what you mean? No. We'll still get married. I'm sure. Very soon our parents will arrange everything. They both looked at each other, smiling.